This is the term we call Maxwell term. And this is the uh, last term of Maxwell's equations. With this, these four equations are combined, they're called the Maxwell's equation. And this is the, it's a representation, statement of our complete understanding of uh, um, electromagnetism. And this is really the story I want you to spend, a, uh, take a little breather and notice what it's saying. So let's just go back through history quickly. We started out by saying that electric field is generated by charges. Not that new. I mean, it's uh, starting to get a little bit abstract, talking about fields and whatnot. But all right, that seems reasonable. And you know, when the same time we introduced the idea of field, we connect the field to force this way, right? So electricity, simple, um, whatever. And then we start talking about magnetic field. And you know, magnetism, we, I mean, we did talk about it, but uh, your intuition about magnetism has more to do with magnetic interaction between a permanent magnet and a ferromagnetic object, or between two permanent magnets. And when you look at magnetism that way, it's completely disconnected from electricity. There's nothing that looks electric here, right? And um, you might look at something like this demo that you saw a while ago, you know, this demo of a, a magnet falling through a conducting material somehow a lot slow, more slowly than otherwise. And that looks weird, but um, I guess this is not completely magnetic. But just looking at it, um, you wouldn't guess the immediate connection to the electricity. So really the modern electromagnetism it starts out by highlighting the connection between magnetism and electricity. So here, Ampere's law actually starts um, off with that. It says that the magnetic field is generated by current, or charges moving. And along the, about the same time we were introducing this, we introduced this because of apparent lack of magnetic monopole. We have to say any kind of force due to magnetic field is actually forced on a moving charge. So you need to have electric charge and you need to have velocity. So starting with Ampere's law, you are starting to build a connection between electricity and magnetism by saying a moving charge can produce magnetic field. Yeah? And I guess uh, you, um, this is the place where you might begin to wonder if the relationship, relationship is reciprocal, as in if a moving charge could produce magnetic field, then could a moving magnetic charge produce electric field? Well, there's no such a thing as a magnetic charge, but there are permanent magnets that do generate magnetic field. And when these permanent magnets move, they do generate electric field. And that's what you are seeing here. But because of a lack of magnetic charge, this has to be stated in a bit of a roundabout way. Instead of saying that magnetic current is generating electric field, we are saying, well, not magnetic current, because that doesn't exist, but the change of magnetic flux or change of magnetic field is what's generating electric field. And when you say it that way, you might, this is one more question that someone who has too much or just the right amount of time to think about this might ask. If a changing magnetic field can generate electric field, can the reverse happen? Can a changing electric field generate magnetic field? And up until this point, your answer was no. Your electric field could be changing. Now, if you mean by changing electric field, you mean current, then sure, <laughs> there it is. But this is what's saying, yes, changing current, uh, sorry, changing electric field will generate magnetic field. So, um, so the entirety of Maxwell's equation relationship is uh, this back and forth. What is the connection between the electricity and magnetism? And this is the one that closes the loop. This is the last set of relationships that says um, 
that what happens between from magnetism to electricity also happens in reverse. It happens from magne electric field to magnetic field. And any sort of lack of symmetry between these two, it really comes down to the fact that there is no magnetic monopole. But for the purpose of this class, we'll just uh, end here that there are no magnetic monopoles, but there's no good reason that they shouldn't exist. So this is Maxwell's equations. It's the complete statement of electricity and magnetism. And um, now having spent all this time, we won't really do much with it. Uh, we will do exactly one thing with it. And this is the one thing that we needed this Maxwell term to do. It's to describe something called electromagnetic wave. 